Everyone has a different talent. And the reason that we're all so messed up is that you're looking at everyone else's life and talent and wishing you were like them. All of that energy that you drain being jealous of anyone else is energy that's taking away from you. And all of your energy should be forced instead into wondering like, what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be of use and service? Rich in more ways than one. The many forms of wealth and how to get a strong start. White coats should be oozing and dripping with wealth. It's entirely possible and should be an expected part of your life now and in the future. Wealth is multifaceted though, and it's not just a dollar in your bank account. I believe in the wealth of many things, including my value as a human being, trusting my spirit to guide me to my highest calling, relationships with people I love and who love me back, confidence, health, living out my magic to serve others, and actual monetary prosperity. In today's episode, I'd like to go into the foundation of tapping into your wealthy life by connecting with something that's higher than yourself. All of us are seeking for the same thing. Everyone wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of themselves as a human being. That's what you're looking for. You're unique and worth no more or no less than any other human. You have a personality, life experience, and gut desires that separate you from anyone else on planet Earth. Your most important work is to tap into what makes you, you, and what really makes you light up. I believe we're part of something much bigger than ourselves. I call that God. You may have other beliefs. But regardless of the faith structure, understanding that someone or something has a larger plan for you opens you up to a direct line of communication to a higher power. And if you can get still and tune into what your soul truly wants, then you can go out and live your purpose. This is your most important work. Your real work is to figure out where your unique power base is and to work on aligning that with your personality. The gifts that you uniquely have to give are the real reason you're here. Your job is to find two things. One, how to live your purpose, and two, to fill yourself up and keep your cup full. I don't believe that it was chance that you were born at this time in the world. In this unique age of technology or with the freedom to create and be a force for good, you were meant to be here and now. You have unique gifts and talents that no one else can live out exactly like you. So you got to tune into your spirit to find out what that is. Now, <laughs> you're probably saying like, whoa, Jamie, this is getting all meta and spiritual. And if finding your purpose was easy, then philosophers and the great thinkers of the ages would have done it for us already. Or I would have like gone into my own spiritual practice. Like, why are we talking about this on the Wealthy White Coat podcast? I want physical wealth. I want a wealth of time. Why are we talking about all this spiritual stuff? And this truly is the foundation for how I've been able to create and from a lot of mentors and great leaders of the world that I've seen create is to start from a strong spiritual base. And so that's what I've got to talk about in this episode today. I don't know that we can ever really know our entire purpose from the beginning, but I believe we each have a unique yearning or longing in life. And that's your gut's guide to helping you take the right next step towards where you should be. That, your gut feelings and gut desires for where you want to go, combined with your life experiences, can clearly guide you to your next steps. Everything in life that has ever happened to you is here to make you better and to help you rise, even the really tough stuff. And when you figure that out, you're, I feel like, naturally drawn into a spiritual practice, praying, or simply just meditating. A spiritual practice really is the number one thing you need to be a wealthy white coat. As Oprah said, if you want to be successful in the world, you need something that gives back and nourishes you. Your heart knows what it wants, so listen to it and give yourself a practice that nourishes your heart and your spirit to help you figure out what it is that you do have to offer that's unique and exciting to the world. Because we're all really seeking the same thing, and it's pretty miraculous when you think about it. Everyone has a different talent. And the reason that we're all so messed up is that you're looking at everyone else's life and talent and wishing you were like them or trying to copy exactly what they did. All of that energy that you drain being jealous of anyone else is energy that you're putting out. It's taking away from you. And all of your energy should be forced instead into wondering like, what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be of use and service? And if you think questions like this, like, how do I use this to serve something bigger than myself? 
It no longer becomes a job, a chore, a headache, a stress. It becomes an offering to the world, your unique offering, which leads you to your next move. So all you have to do is two things. No big deal. One, keep nourishing your spirit. And two, plan the single next right move and keep making the next right move after that. So let's first start talking about nourishing your spirit. You can call it nourishing your spirit or filling your cup so that you can be full and your cup runs over so that you have more than enough to give to other people generously. If you don't nurture your soul, you end up dried up and wasted. You end up tired, cranky, exhausted, dejected, and you just don't have enough to give to other people. You end up grumpy every time someone asks you for something because your cup is empty and now they want some of yours. For me, this is truly the source of empowerment in entrepreneurship or actually any kind of work I do. I know who I am and where I come from, and I have so much to offer and so much to give. And this daily nourishing happens daily and weekly. And for me, it comes from small daily habits and weekly practices that are non-negotiable in my life. Things such as morning and evening prayer and reading my scriptures, taking time every day just to walk outside, look at the mountains in Utah, breathe fresh air, and just enjoy being alive. Giving myself at least one full day off a week to be present with my family and not do one drop of work. Just to be with my family and enjoy those relationships and not be trying to sneak work in on the side. I just need at least at least one day, preferably three or four, to just rest and think and not be so busy trying to do and achieve. Because I find that in that downtime, when I tap into what I really want to do next, and I'm really open to receiving, I feel that single clear next step that I should take. I actually get all my best ideas when I'm not working. Meditation or just being still allows you to literally tap into the power that created you so you're in alignment with it and are aligned with where it is that you uniquely should be going. Then you can carry that out into the world and everything that you do comes from the center of alignment and what it is you're genuinely interested in, where your gut wants you to go and what your unique personalities and traits are. Because when you have a heart on fire, you can do anything. So trust your instincts and fuel that unique spirit. You were meant for more. First of all, I need you to believe that. So don't worry. In the coming episodes, we will dive into all the things that I know you're excited to learn. We just did a survey. We got such a great response, and I love seeing the things you're most excited to learn and talk about. Some of those topics include how to make sales, how to create your own brand, creating digital products, effectively marketing yourself, management and leadership, embracing technology, gaining confidence, dealing with failure, running a profitable company and talking about all the finance and legal aspects and more stuff like this with mindset. But before we jump into that, I needed this to be kind of a foundation episode to really start with that this is the foundation of tuning in to what you actually want to do. Because if you're like most white coats and like me, when I first started trying to change what I was doing in my career and to not just be an employee, to work and earn and live in a more flexible way that not only provided well for my family, but fueled my soul. And I really got stuck for a lot of months because I just wanted like the surefire business that's guaranteed to make the money that has no risk and that is guaranteed to work, which surprise, surprise, does not work. I was so focused on finding the right business move or the thing that would make me the most money that it took me a long time to get still and to tap into like what I actually want to do and what my unique personality and my desires, how that can come to fruition so I can do it in a unique way that no one else in the world has done. Because what you're doing is unique and you have to understand who you are from the very beginning and what your traits are, what your preferences are, what your life experience has brought to you at this point. So you can take all of that and use it for your greater good to create something that is truly you that will stand the test of time. Because you need to know this from the beginning. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart and it will take a lot out of you. And the first three ventures I tried, I failed miserably because I I just thought it was a good business idea and I wanted to jump on that train because it seemed like a good business idea, but I wasn't like actually passionate about any of those things. And so with 
uh, trial and error found that what I love to do is to create by digital writing and by creating digital courses and by sharing my voice very publicly, um, which I hadn't seen done before a lot in the pharmacy world. And so I still don't know where this is going to go. But even when I first started, I didn't know the game plan and didn't have a sure A to Z. But I started writing online, like just because it felt like something I should do. I couldn't put a tag on it or a pin in it to say like, this is because I do this, I am guaranteed to get these results. I just felt compelled to write online daily as an expression of my soul to share things that are going well, things that are going miserably, the things I want to learn, where I'm feeling stuck and confused. I just felt drawn to that. So I started doing it without over planning and over analyzing and crushing that creation with expectation. And it's been so fun because that has naturally opened a lot of different doors of opportunity, of way of meeting cool people, working with cool people, getting amazing projects that I would certainly not be qualified for on a resume, but by creating and building in public, I became the authority in this space and people were drawn to working with me in a way that you can never have people drawn to you on a resume, like if people don't know you. So what we're going to talk about a lot is in being a wealthy white coat is building in public, but also building from a place that actually resonates with your heart, like that is something actually you love, whether that means inside of your field or out. Yeah, you have permission to not be a pharmacist, not to be an NP or a PA, to not be the MD in whatever it is you create. There's so many opportunities out there for you to be that professional license who has unique insight into healthcare, but you don't have to do that. Just because you have a degree, that does not define who you are. And so I would highly recommend that you cultivate any sort of practice that nurtures your spirit and your heart and gets in tune with what you actually want. Because entrepreneurship, as I've said, is not easy, but it's also incredibly rewarding. And if you're pairing like what you actually desire and what you want, even if you have no idea how it's going to pan out, then you start to be on the right track of pairing your your personality with that subject matter or that area that you think about it a lot and you love to talk about and explore. That's the best place to start rather than looking at the metrics and saying, oh, looks like precision med medicine is trending right now. That means that's a safe place to be or coming at it from like just a business perspective, doing it, pairing it with your personalities and your desires is kind of the magic and the secret sauce that sets you apart from anyone else. Because I know white, co white coats are really risk averse and they want to know all the steps and they only want to do something if it's going to pay off long term in the future and get guaranteed results. But that's not how creation works and life and entrepreneurship works. All you're getting in the habit of doing is taking the right next step. And it's probably going to be a crazy road going up and down with a lot of bends, but it's all trending in the right direction. And when you forget about worrying if it's the most straight path to get you where you think you should be, just follow what you actually want to do and start building in public to meet a need that there is in the world. And it'll be a far more profitable, fun experience than trying to control the end from the beginning. I hope that makes sense. Because from the beginning of The Wealthy White Coat, I really want to teach you that you've got to tap into what your soul wants, what you're calling for, and just get in the habit of being in tune to take the next step. Just the single next step that will move you forward into what it is that you want to explore and check out and do. Because those are the habits and the ways of thinking that really set you up to be a wealthy white coat in so many different aspects where you can start creating things that give you income and let you earn in flexible ways and work in new ways. You just have to first just trust your gut and listen to your heart and what it actually wants to do and shut out all of the shoulds that you do, should do in the world. Just trust what like what you actually want to do and start there because it'll probably change a lot in the future. And it's so awesome to change your mind, but get in the habit of starting and really trusting that gut, trusting your heart and spirit. You're a unique person that has so much value to give to the world and there's no one just like you. So in conclusion, I'd really like you to cultivate that spiritual practice and start thinking more like an artist than like white coat. Think like someone who's 
unafraid to explore and trust their gut. Because if you avoid trusting your gut, it's going to show one way or another. And from the beginning, if you can just tap into what you're genuinely interested in, what subjects are calling to you, what topics are always on your mind, and two, pair that with your personality and ways you like working. So you're not trying to force yourself to be like someone else, but genuinely you in a way that you love showing up to the world, then you're going to be unstoppable. But this is the firm foundation that you got to start strong with understanding what it, where it is your heart wants to be and how to take that single next step and just trusting your heart. And <laughs> I know this is this is probably sounding meta and not like any uh, healthcare podcast you've seen, but entrepreneurship is such a creative medium. And I think that's why I love it so much is because I've been able to create and pair it with my pharmacy knowledge in a way I never thought possible. And so we got to start by addressing that this is a creative endeavor and you need more help than just your own brain and to tap into whatever inspiration that you feel comes to you, because that will be like your secret sauce and your superpower to be able to take those topics, your personality and need in the world and weave them together to create your own personal brand and digital products and all of the cool things we're going to talk about in nitty gritty detail that are going to be so awesome. But if you don't understand this from the beginning, then you're going to be building something that you should build, but not something that you want to build. And that sets you apart from the world, the secret sauce of tuning into your spirit. Thank you for joining me today. I've had so much fun. Let me know if this resonates with you. I'm genuinely interested if this is something that resonates with you or it's a little woo-woo. Don't worry. We're going to jump into all the fun things that you want in the coming weeks. But this truly is a foundational topic we have to address first.